Hey traders, Kill Stokes here and it's Sunday afternoon and I uh, wanted to record a quick video before I go ahead and watch uh, the US take on Portugal in our second World Cup uh, fixture. Uh, but I was going through some emails and going through some of the comments on my YouTube page from the latest Week in Review video and two topics uh, really stood out that I wanted to address. One was risk reward and another topic was kind of the topic of of hedging or or lack thereof and uh, I want to talk about they, they really work hand to hand with each other and uh, Friday we had a great example of that but I want to start off by reading you the comment that I got on YouTube uh, after last week uh, this trader says great video kill I'm a member of the syndicate uh, for about three months so far I have learned a lot from you and Jason I have a question last month I made 30 trades uh, with a 70-30 win-loss ratio. So this this trader made 30 trades and was 70% correct, which is a, a outstanding number. Um, but, and there's always a but, but I'm, I'm break even in my win-loss. So uh, basically break even with profit. What do you think about that? Uh, do I need to cut my, uh, I need to cut my losses, or do I need to cut my losses earlier? or increase the size of my position. Thanks to Keel. I will wait for your reply. And as always, uh, if you ever check the comments, I, I do respond to almost every comment. Uh, so I wrote back and uh, essentially I said, whenever I hear this from a, a client or hear this from a trader, there's usually two things. Um, a, it's discipline, meaning that you're making some type of mistake in managing the trade. Uh, taking profits early is a common one. Moving stop losses back is another common one. That's what that's the the first place I usually go, and the second one is just risk reward, meaning that well, on 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 average, um, you're risking a lot more on your trade, uh, so you're you're taking a bigger drawdown on each trade on average than what you're actually gaining. And I wrote this to the trader. He responded. He says. Uh, Thanks. Yes, sometimes my risk is higher than my rewards. Sometimes I let the trade go against me a little more waiting for a reversal. I think we've all been there where the, the market spikes back against us and we're like, okay, I'm just going to move them a little bit further because I, I know this next structure level is going to hold. Okay, a little bit further. And uh, a 20 pip stop suddenly turns into a 50, 50 pip stop. I've been there. You've been there. Uh, <laughs> it happens. It's not, it's not good. You need to stop it, but it happens. Um, and he also said, sometimes I just close my positions out on first targets. Um, so basically taking uh, taking targets early. And the, the part I want to cover was really risk reward. And that goes into the second topic I want to talk about, uh, which is hedging. Now, for you guys that are maybe not familiar about hedging, hedging is basically a, a safety precaution that traders and investors use. It's it basically a way to to cover your behind in a trade. Uh, for example, on uh, you know on coming into Friday, I had two trades on. I had a trade on Dollar Canada. I had a trade on Aussie CAD. I was going short uh, short Aussie CAD. So I was buying uh, buying Canada on Aussie CAD, and I was going long Dollar CAD. So I was selling uh, Canada essentially on that pair and. I'm not, I, I don't, trading, uh, not trading, hedging is not a part of my, uh, it's not a part of my plan. I don't, I don't purposely try to hedge. It does, it does give you a form of protection, as I mentioned earlier, uh, but I'm, I'm a shorter term trader. So I don't, you know, it, it's, it's nothing I implement. Uh, it's something that, for example, the, the clients right now that are coming through the 12 week transformation and the former clients and uh, those traders are going to have the opportunity to do something called uh Main Street Alpha. Basically, we're setting them up with a chance to uh, track a portfolio and eventually get funded to manage money. Now, when you're managing a lot of money, it makes more sense because, what, well, what do we always say? We say the number one rule of trading is, uh, you know, don't go broke. Number two rule of trading is don't go broke. It's, it's all about conservation of capital. And when you manage money at the higher level, I'm talking about real clients, not, you know, not your your brother or your uncle that, 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 gets all excited when they hear about you returning 50% a year. Uh, we're talking about real investors who don't really care about what you return, you know, as long as it's better than, uh, you know, what they're getting in the banks or anything like that. The, the real concern is what's your drawdown and, and how much you're not losing. They don't want to see that drawdown number. So hedging is a way to, to help with that. Uh, but that's an entirely different topic.
uh, that's, a, that's going in a different direction than what I want to go on. But I want to talk about hedging in forms of risk reward. And I get this comment a lot too. Well, Akil, how come you're selling CAD on one pair and buying it on another? That doesn't, that doesn't make sense. Uh, and, you know, in the Forex, we're lucky enough that each, pair's, each pair is individual. Um, so just because I'm, I'm selling CAD against the Aussie doesn't mean it's going to have the same reaction against the dollar. But the rules that I use is, hey, I trade what I see. I trade what I see. If an opportunity is there, if it meets my rules, when I'm looking at the charts, I take the trade. I don't get scared out of one trade because I have a position on another one. So heading into Friday, we had an interesting day. Uh, it was a, a pretty slow news event day, except for 830, where we had core CPI, core retail sales, and a few other minor uh, fundamental announcements for Canada. And just from my experience in the market, especially on the day trading side of things or uh, the intraday trading side of things, Canada usually moves with with uh, with these news events. We usually see some type of reaction from Canada. So I'm going into the day. I've got both these positions on. I've got news coming out at 830. I already know that, well, the most common scenario is I'm going to get stopped out of one and I'm going to hit targets on the other. And this is where having that consistent risk reward comes in because there's nothing wrong with being a 50% trader. Nothing at all. In fact, some of the best traders out there are only 50% traders. But it's managing that risk reward. So looking at dollar, looking at Aussie CAD first, uh, this was a trade we took in the syndicate earlier in the week. We had the consolidation zone up here. We had a double top, 2618, all that fun stuff. I essentially entered, entered the market up here at our double top. Now, I did some trade management some uh, uh, while the trade was in progress. And my stop loss, well, we'll do this first. My entry was about right here, 101.96. This blue line was my entry. My stop loss was about, and I don't have the exact numbers. I'm just going to give you an area. My stop loss was about 102.13s uh, here. So my stop loss was about this. Let's call it 102.14. Boom. So I was risking that much. That's going to be, what, about 20, 20 pips of risk? 20 pips of risk right there. My targets right down here at these lows, let's call them 101.33. Put that on, setting myself up for the potential of a 60 pip, I don't know why I keep pressing the O button, about the 60 pip profit. So I'm risking 20 to gain 60. Going over to dollar CAD, Took this on a double bottom trade, CTS trade on, uh, I think, Thursday in the live room or right after the live room. This one, again, entry was right about here, 108.18. Stop loss was right, under the, right underneath the 108 even handle, about 107.96, let's call it. Right about there. Again, let's make this red for, uh, red for our stops. And again, we're risking about, what's this, duh, 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 about 20, 22 pips here of risk. Reward was up here. Retest the previous structure, which we never got, obviously, but we're shooting for that. And we're looking at a potential reward of about, what is this, 108.73. Carry to one. Multiply that by four. <laughs> about 53. 53, 55 pips, something like that. Math isn't my best quality, and I don't have my calculator in front of me. But about 53 pips. So again, even on this scenario, we're risking about 20 to gain about 50. And you see why setting myself up here, setting, again, going back to Friday, coming into the market, already in my head, I'm going to lose one of these trades. The, the most common scenario is this. If, if we see a reaction off news, if we see a reaction off news, I'm probably going to lose one trade. I'm probably going to win at the other one. Normally, you're saying, oh, I'm going to lose one. I'm going to win one 50%. That's bad. I've got to win every trade to make money. No, you don't. And you can see the confidence you can have going into a trade when you set yourself up like this. Is winning one and losing one a bad thing? No, because in both scenarios, if I lose, guess what? How much am I losing? 20 pips. 
if I win, how much am I winning? 50 pips, 60 pips. So when the news event came out, guess what? Aussie CAD shot down, boom, plus 60. Dollar CAD shot down, minus 20. I made a 40 pip profit. It's as simple as that. That's the power of risk reward. You don't have to be a high percentage trader, depending on your strategy. You don't have to be 80% trader. You can be a 50% trader and still make plenty, plenty of profit. And, and a, a lot of the, uh, I, I, I get feedback from a lot of the, the not the old 12 transformation members, but the, the ones that came through previous courses. And it, it, usually what I find is after a couple months, after maybe a year, they start to notice that. The common theme is everyone thinks they need to win so much and you really don't. It's that the risk reward on average is, is what um, is going to do you do you the best in, in, in getting you those results. So again, uh, a topic that came into my mind again through uh, it was an email from someone and then it was a, a YouTube video from another person. But wanted to in, wanted to address it because I think there's a, a myth out there about, uh, you know, about hedging your position being a negative thing. And I think there's also a myth out there about in order to be a successful trader, you have to be a, a very, very high percentage trader. Now, again, it's like, like it, it depends on your strategy, but you don't have to. You can easily be a 50 percent, 40 percent trader and still be profitable. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this video. I may put it out tonight. Uh, I may just hold this for syndicate members. I may uh, I may put it in the weekend review on Thursday. I'll figure that out uh, later today. Uh, but. Hope you guys enjoyed this stuff. Uh, leave me a message if uh, if you like this sort of thing. It's, it's different. It's not necessarily trading, but it's, it works around trading. So if you have any questions about this, uh, or maybe I shouldn't say that because uh, then we'll turn YouTube into a training course. Uh, just leave me leave me a like and leave me a comment. If you like this stuff, say, hey, Kyo, this was cool. Um, and if you have any questions, just write them in and uh, maybe I'll bring them back up in a future video. Um, and of course, if you're a 12-week transformation member, just shoot me, a, shoot me a message through the chat and I'll answer it through there. Uh, so until next time, traders, plan your trade, trade your plan. Good luck in the week coming up if this video gets out uh, in the beginning of the week. Take care.